Tis the hour for cauliflower. <laughs> Don't ever use that. <laughs> Welcome back to Cooking Sherry. Today we're going to be making one of my favorite meals. It is breaded chicken cutlets with mashed cauliflower. This meal is my take on the classic combination of fried chicken and mashed potatoes, but it's actually a lot easier to make and it happens to be healthier too, so it's a win-win. I can see this recipe becoming a part of your regular rotation. Especially if it's a weeknight and you have no idea what to cook for dinner. This is something that you can whip up really quick last minute and it's gonna be just as satisfying as something that would take longer to make. So that's why it's one of my favorite recipes. All we gotta do for this meal is marinate our chicken, then bread it and bake. And for our cauliflower, boil, add some ingredients to it, mash it up, and you're done. Okay, so our first step is gonna be marinating our chicken. So for our ingredients right now, we have a little over a pound of chicken cutlets, mayo, buttermilk, one egg, salt, pepper, and I have some seasoning here. I chose a garlic and herb seasoning, but you can use whatever you like. This marinade is a multitasker. Not only does it tenderize your chicken, it adds flavor to it, and it also is gonna act as our glue for the breading afterwards so this makes life so much easier got a big bowl over here that i'm gonna put our chicken in and we're gonna start by cracking one egg you came for right that's what everybody came for okay we got our egg in there nice and safe and we're gonna take about two tablespoons of mayo and add that to our bowl a little bit more these two ingredients here the egg and the mayo those are our stickiest ingredients. That's gonna be uh, a main source of that glue for the breading. So I'm just gonna whisk these two together, kind of get them looking like a paste already. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna add about a cup of buttermilk. Our buttermilk is what really tenderizes the chicken. It adds that flavor, but also the acidity is what breaks down the chicken and just makes it a lot more tender and juicy, especially with white meat, it tends to be drier. Put a few pinches of salt, some pepper, and some garlic and herb seasoning. You can add paprika to this, onion powder, whatever it is that you like. Keep it mainly simple. You can keep it salt and pepper if you want. But this is a nice basic combination. You can even add some hot sauce to that too if you like a little spice, cayenne pepper. Spicy. I like that. We are gonna take our chicken breast. Okay, this is my chicken hand. And put it into this mix. We just want this chicken to be submerged. Okay, this looks good. Okay, I'm gonna take a piece of foil and cover this up. <laughs> there you go. Double the foil. And I'm gonna leave it in my fridge for about 30 minutes and then we can start on the bread. Okay, while our chicken is marinating, I'm gonna prepare our breading. So we have here in front of us some corn flakes, some panko breadcrumbs, flour, parmesan, 
salt, and cooking spray. After the years of making breaded chicken cutlets, I can confirm that the two crunchiest types of breading are cornflakes, which I think takes number one place, and panko, which is a Japanese breadcrumb that is light, puffy, airy, and just super crunchy. I love both of them, so I decided to just mix them. So this breading is really easy. We're just gonna pretty much combine all these ingredients. But first, I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees because since it doesn't take very long to bake these cutlets, the breading might not get as brown as we want them to be. So that's why a cool tip that I can share with you that is really easy but makes for a nice brown coating is just to toast our breadcrumbs before we combine the rest of our ingredients. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I have a bag of cornflakes that I gotta crush up. Uh, you can use a rolling pin or a mallet. I have a, a pan. But yeah, we're just gonna crush them up small enough to where they look like breadcrumbs. Okay, these look like a good size. I'm gonna take a pan that I have covered in parchment paper for the breadcrumbs over that, or the cornflakes over here, panko, and just combine them together, spread them evenly over the pan. Uh, this, this, this is a good combo right here, because the most important thing about chicken cutlet breading is that it's super crispy and brown. So this is a must. I don't want soggy chicken cutlets being nasty. So just take any kind of cooking spray. You can put melted butter over it, mix it, but this is a lot easier if you have a spray. And just coat these guys so they can be nice and brown. All right, coat it into the oven for three minutes. Okay, we're gonna take our breading out of the oven. They got nice and brown, but we are gonna put them back in the oven, so this will continue to get even browner. Ooh, this, is, this is a move that I don't work on. But we're just gonna pour our breadcrumbs into a bowl right here. You don't need to fry food for it to be yummy or crispy. Honestly, it's, you'll see. You'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to take some Parmesan and add that to the mix. A little bit of salt and then a little bit of flour. With this, you have everything in one bowl. Your breading is in one bowl. You're not dipping into separate plates. <laughs> one bowl of breading, one bowl of marinade slash glue. <laughs> and then we are just going to mix our breading until everything is incorporated. Okay, this looks beautiful. It's ready. And now our chicken is ready to, to be taken out of the fridge. So I'm gonna do that. Our chicken in its little buttermilk bath. Buttermilk spa. Now I'm gonna get our station ready. This is very simple. I just have a pan. Uh, lined with foil, and then and a wire rack on top. Now the wire rack is optional, but I highly recommend putting a wire rack over this because that way your chicken cooks a lot more evenly and it's crispy on both sides. Otherwise, you might want to flip your chicken halfway into cooking it so that both sides can be just as crispy and brown. Definitely want to spray your wire rack, okay? And we're gonna keep that oven at 400 degrees. Same temperature, no need to adjust. Okay, designated chicken pan, once again. 
Now you want to make sure that your chicken is evenly coated so you can just kind of flip them around there again. Okay, and then we will dip in our bread. Okay, these look great. They're evenly coated on both sides. They are ready to go in the oven, and I'm gonna leave them in there for 20 to 25 minutes. You can check on them after 20 minutes, see if they're brown enough, but that should be the average time for this size cutlet. And then we'll work on our mashed cauliflower. All right, while our chicken is cooking in the oven, we're gonna prepare our mashed cauliflower. It's super easy. I have here some cauliflower, just a medium head of cauliflower cut up into little pieces. Got some cream cheese, some butter, some shredded mozzarella, and a little bit of milk. First thing is I have a pot here with some boiling water. We're gonna drop the cauliflower in there and let it cook for about 10 minutes until it's soft. And then we're gonna bring it back, combine it with these ingredients, smash it, and then we're done. And then by the time we're done, the chicken is done. And then we're, it just is done. Then we eat, that's it. Forget about it, it's so bad. Okay, so I just drop my little cauliflower babies. Bye bye. See you soon. Ten minutes on the clock. Go. It is time to take our cauliflower off the stove. So we got some oven mitts here. And I have a colander in the sink. Drain that water. We want this cauliflower to be hot. That is important. So work right away. We put our hot cauliflower in a bowl where we're gonna do our mashing. It's nice and soft and we are gonna add our ingredients to make this nice and creamy. And this is not this is not meant to be, you know, a replacement for mashed potatoes, but it really could be. Okay, we added our butter, shredded mozzarella, and a little Parmesan. You can put whatever kind of cheese you want. And just a splash of milk. Okay, and we're gonna take our masher. You can also use a blender if you want. Smash it, and oh! Don't forget the cream cheese gives it that texture. It's right over here. I uh, forgot to mention, keep your cream cheese room temperature. All these ingredients should be room temperature. So when it's added to the hot cauliflower, it stays hot. All right. Our match. Oh, hello. Texture. She's adorable. Okay, um, so that's it. Our cauliflower is done. And in a few minutes, we're going to take out our chicken and then our meal will be complete. Seriously, easiest meal ever. Okay, our mashed cauliflower is done. And now it's time to take our chicken out of the oven. I'm gonna grab my oven mitts. I am hungry. So excited. Ooh. All right. So nice and crunchy and crispy. Cauliflower looks so creamy. That combination, that texture, I can't wait to try. Okay, okay. Let's do it then. Gonna take a piece of chicken. Oh, hello. Take a piece of chicken, take a piece of chicken. Don't drop it. A little bit of our cauliflower. So cheesy, so creamy. Now, we will try it. Okay, let me get a good bite. Gotta get a little bit of everything. Mmm. Ooh. 
did it. Mmm. We did it. The chicken is so tender on the inside, and that's a real crunch. That's so good. With the creamy cauliflower, the flavors are so awesome, and there's cheese in both, so as I take another bite, for research purposes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and you'll try it at home. This is one of my favorites and I think it'll be one of your new favorites too. Um, they had a great time, I had a great time. Remember please to subscribe, like, comment, and hit the bell for notifications on the next video. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is my dinner. I need to go and eat it now. So, bye. <laughs> Top of my head, show me still.